Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Stock, and I'm bringing you the latest and greatest up-to-date information on some of the stock activity within the stock market. This is for entertainment purposes only, though I do trade in some of these stocks myself. Today, I'm looking at how ARK Invest and BNGO were made for each other. Seriously, a love story. Uh, I'm looking to find out how I will play this stock moving forward. Uh, I hope that it provides some insight for you guys. And without further ado, let's get ready to rock. All right, welcome to the show. I believe that this stock can go 10 times to 15 times its current value, even at the inflated price that we have. I will talk about that stock price towards the end of this video, but first I got to make my case for ARK Invest and for BNGO and how the two of them go together uh, from here forward. If I call them bingo, it's just easier to say than BNGO every time. Uh, it also makes me want to start singing the song B-I-N-G-O and there's no, there's no I and there's talk symbol. You know, the ticker symbol is just... It's not there and I want it to be there. All right, so uh, I'm gonna get started, but first subscribe, click the notification bell so you don't miss these videos when they come through. Make sure that you like it if you like it, share it with your friends, uh, you know, so that we can grow this thing as big as possible. The more support I have from you guys, the more time that I can put into this to bring you uh, the best information that I can find on it and build uh, my best case possible for whether to stick with a stock or get rid of a stock. I do have a position. It's a small position because at this point it still is a penny stock. It's still going to behave like a penny stock. Like I said, I'll talk about that later. First, I got to make my case. All right, so here we have an article by Simon Barnett. He's an analyst who works for ARK Invest. And uh, this article talking about early cancer detection, uh, early detection uh, being the key to uh, uh, increase the survival rate for cancer. When it, the earlier it's detected, uh, the more likely the, uh, the person is to survive. And if you take a look, they provide a table uh, about that, that for uh, distant metastatic cancers, 55% of deaths, even though it's the fewest amount of cases. Um, and then regional and then localized. So if they detect early, they can do a whole lot more uh, to help out that patient to uh, give them the, uh, the best prognosis possible. So down here, something that I wanna point out that's important to making my case without getting into the weeds of the medical side of this, you guys can come here. This is uh, free to access um, right here, this last sentence that we have, the design of a robust tool Again, key on those that, on that phrase, robust tool to detect cancer at an early stage in large swaths of global population will be critical in reducing cancer mortality rates. So um, that robust tool, I think it lies with, uh, with BNGO, you know, as one of those key players in that. If I scroll down to this paragraph that we have down here, in this very first sentence, it says, because of limited accuracy, BNGO's Sapphire system is highly accurate. Poor resolution. BNGO system has uh, high amounts of resolution, a uh, very, very excellent resolution and misperceptions. The more uh, information they have, the clearer picture we have, which I would get a clear picture from Sapphire, which is made by uh, BioNano uh, Genomics. It sounds almost like they're addressing it directly. Even if that's not what's implied, it's, uh, it's at least a tool that meets the needs of what ARCA is describing. So uh, about the man, about Simon Barnett, uh, he has a Twitter account. You can see it here, Simon Barnett at uh, S Barnett Arc uh, on Twitter. And uh, he says that he's taking a week off and then he's talking about structural variation. Um, those uh, structural variants uh, or the structural variation that he's uh, talking about is addressed directly by, uh, by BNGO uh, with their Sapphire technology that they take a look at structural variations and with a high amount of accuracy, they give more complete stories. Uh, so that uh, leading into early cancer detection, um, you know, to me, those two things going together are just huge. And then over here in this, uh, this Twitter post that also comes up as a preview on Google, it says cancer screen begins at a certain age likelihood, and then should also begin for people with pathogenic or likely uh, pathogenic hereditary cancer variants. So there's a lot going on here that would express ARC's interest in BNGO as a, a something to add to their ARC G portfolio for their ETF. Uh, and I think it's just a beautiful match. I think that that really there is a love story to be told here, and, and I, I'm going to keep making that case for it. I got to continue because we got a lot to cover. All right. So uh, this is BioNano uh, Genomics website, and in here, if I scroll down to the second paragraph, um, the first two sentences that we have, there's a structural variance again, cancer diagnosis, just as what was uh, in the um, the Twitter from Simon Barnett. 
uh, prognosis and treatment decisions. So we have diagnosis, prognosis, treatment, all about structural variants. And that's really what they go for. And then it says, especially for hematological malignancies, which I believe are blood cancers. Um, I'm not a medical expert by any means. Uh, I, I'm a mathematician uh, and I'm an educator. Um, I am not into medicine, but I, I really see uh, from a qualitative perspective, uh, uh, a fundamental perspective, a lot of uh, confluence between these two companies, between ARK Invest, uh, adding them to their ETF and uh, BioNano just being a great match for them. Uh, and it says the comprehensive analysis of all cytogenic, uh, I'm sorry, cytogenic aberrations require a combination of techniques. And then uh, they get into the weeds here about uh, just the various ways that right now, as the current state of things are, it's a long, it's drawn out process. I'll show more of that later. BNGO just comes with a Sapphire and just streamlines that entire process and does it better. Uh, they do it cheaper, they do it better. It really is uh, groundbreaking innovation. All right, in paragraph three down here, it says when all 48 samples were subsequently analyzed. So uh, they did a study, they sampled 48, they identified everything, uh, all the aberrations that were there before. Uh, so the structural variants, I believe is what they're referring to are the structural abnormalities that they'd say in this previous sentence. BioNano allowed for a better resolution and a more complete picture. The less complete the picture, the more that you have to uh, make uh, guesses. And so with a more complete picture, there's less ambiguity. So that's also written down here that it resolves unambiguously. Um, in other cases, there were fusions identified, marker chromosomes. It's just better to have a more complete picture because you can make more specific diagnoses and treatments and prognoses. Um, it's just, it's an excellent story all around. And then uh, down here, this uh, last sentence, it says generally more uh, genome images and results are more complete than all three individual previous tests and most likely delivered true underlying genomic architecture. Um, even if you don't keep up with all the verbiage that's there, um, just know the, the whole more complete part that we're getting a better story that they really are uh, breaking ground uh, with this technology that it, it is it is innovative it is disruptive um, and these are things that all uh, continue to make the case that we have okay this sentence in paragraph four they identified uh, 23 potential gene fusions only four were previously observed so that's 19 other gene fusions uh, percentage wise uh, you know that that's that's huge they that's almost six times more of what was previously observed with their Sapphire system. The fact that uh, that Sapphire can uh, produce uh, these sort of results over you know, the years of medical research <clears throat> and uh, the current technology that's out there, um, this is just, it, it, it's groundbreaking. Uh, and I think that they really have a, a good shot at making a lot of uh, business progress. I have, uh, I have my notes here. Uh, I've been working on this for about three hours, so I hope that you uh, that you guys really enjoyed this. And that's three hours just today, not including my research that I did prior to this. All right, so something else that's important. Uh, if this really is going to be a technology, it has to be something that's an improvement upon, upon previous methods. Uh, one of these professors uh, from, from RUMC says uh, that they were surprised at how smooth and fast the implementation was. That means that there's a little ramp up period uh, for whoever adopts this technology. Uh, it can be a quick adoption. It can also be a quick turnaround from the old methods uh, to the new methods and uh, being smooth and fast. I mean, that's exactly what you want. You want something intuitive and streamlined that's not going to, to hamper um, the state of things because it's already complex enough to try and uh, make these diagnoses, prognoses, treatments um, that we don't want the technology to be the thing getting in the way. And it sounds like Sapphire is an enabler, um, not a roadblock. All right, don't underestimate the value of the statements here, especially because I'm making the case between ARC and BNGO being a love story, uh, just a match made in heaven. All right, so uh, they have focused on leukemias and lymphomas, so we're talking about cancers here. Current standard of care is complex. Um, outdated methods, and then it says that clinicians and patients, and they would be better off transformed. So transformation is what we're talking about here. Uh, this is something that can really break the mold uh, for what previously came before it. And uh, BNGO being that thing and ARC looking uh, for those transformative, those disruptive technologies that really make improvements. Um, and I'll get to, the, to its return to stock investors soon, uh, but I mean, it is, it is all there. All right, so now we start to get more into like financially, how does this benefit us? Because this can be an excellent technology. It can be oh, just a stupendous company, but it can be a terrible investment. So when we look at uh, the, um, the corporate overview from BioNano, 
uh, we start to get a better picture. And honestly, I think that even though they're trying to make their best sell, I still think that they're underselling themselves. I think they're trying to be modest so that they can be straightforward with their shareholders. And we want that transparency. It really gives us faith and confidence in, in, confidence in the company. The last thing we want to do is overinvest and then find out that they were less than what they said they were. So I think that they give us sort of like a low to, to middle ground of, of where I would see them to be. So uh, they already have a surface a, a service going on. Um, they already have the Sapphire system available. Like these things are already created and they're already already being studied, already uh, in use in different areas. So um, it's not like we're waiting for a product at some point in time. We're waiting more for like FDA approval uh, to come through and, and, and give it seal of approval saying, hey, you know, this company is legitimate. We agree with what they're doing. And uh, there really is some sort of uh, medical value to be given um, through the technology that they offer. So uh, in this slide, you can see that they have their own corner of the market space. Uh, here, they price themselves to be between 2.6 and 3.8 billion. So, um, you know, 10 times their current uh, market value, their market cap, I'm sorry, of uh, 200 million. So I said 10 times, but this is more like 13 times uh, their current market cap just to that that base level that they have right there, and this is really 19 times. So even in my even in my uh, my advertisement of 10 to 15 times, those are estimates. I was saying basically two uh, to three billion. When if we round to the nearest billion, this is more like a three to four billion dollar company. Um, so, you know, 15X, you know, they're showing here 19X, and I still think that they're under, underselling themselves. Uh, they have a solid system, and I really think that as we know more about their software and how it's going to be used. I think the creativity in the in the market space, the creativity uh, of the labs and the universities and the medical uses, I think they're gonna see a whole lot more sold. Uh, I think they'll see more coming out of this promising technology than what they've let on. All right, so just to recap, uh, they do, have a cost-effective solution. They have their own niche in the market space. Uh, they're already telling us that they're worth a few billion dollars, even though they're only coming in right now to market cap of just a few million, which is excellent news for us who uh, believe in this company, who have done our own due diligence. And we're like, hey, this is a company I should be a part of. And I should be a part of it now because they haven't grown yet. They haven't hit that actual boom. If I go all the way down to uh, slides 13 and 14, this is the uh, previous workflow that they had, and it says it's expensive, slow, and cumbersome. All three of those things uh, are taken care of. If we look at slide 14, uh, they streamline the process and they make it instead of being just tens of thousands of dollars and in, in days, maybe even weeks of work, uh, it comes down to uh, collecting the samples. Uh, a few hundred or just a few thousand dollars, you know, till it's all done, uh, all the way till that sample is analyzed. I don't know how long this uh, process in between takes, so I can't speak to that part, but I would have to say it's probably a whole lot faster than what we see up here uh, and a whole lot less involvement. So this is another part where the disruption comes in. It's a, it's a disruption to the current industry and the current methods that are there. And that's, again, more of what ARC is looking for. So I don't mean to keep speaking for ARC, uh, this is ARC's investment philosophy. So if you look up here, it says the ARC investment uh, process. If that <laughs> um, tab goes away, there we go. And it says their investment philosophy, and it says innovation is key to growth. BNGO is innovative. All right. And if you can, uh, you can read down through this, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, but uh, it says here about long-term investment opportunities. BNGO is at the beginning of that long-term opportunity. And it says focusing on public companies, leaders, they are enablers, most definitely. Uh, beneficiaries of disruptive innovation. Yes, yes, and yes. I mean, it, it's just, it's, it matches up so perfectly with what they, uh, with what ARC has to say um, with their investment philosophy. It's just hard to argue with. All right, so if we read this, it says, we believe the opportunities resulting from disruptive innovation are often undiscovered or misunderstood by traditional investment managers. And I would say that uh, it, it, a BNGO is misunderstood right now because it's still being treated like a, the penny stock that it is for its current price, and it's not being treated for the stock that it is uh, for the company that's behind it. And if we really look at the company that's behind the stock price, there's just you know a behemoth that's ready to just drive this stock price forward and really uh, you know move it upwards over the long term. They do need some time to grow. The investment uh, position that I have, I'm not going to sell. All right, so the position that I have, I'm going to stay in for the long term, and I, I'm going to just wait for this company to take off with that momentum that I think it's going to take off with, especially if ARC really does express their interest and puts in an investment into this company. 
Lastly, and this is probably the important to most of us as investors, it says aiming to offer long-term growth and capital appreciation 10 to 15 times is huge. And you saw just based on what they valued themselves at, that's 13 to 19 times their current market cap. So uh, there's going to be that long-term growth and capital appreciation. They have a solid company. They have a solid uh, business model. I really feel like uh, BNGO can capitalize on the data that their service collects. And I think that they can do it in a much bigger way. That data as a service um, you know, is really something that has taken off in the last few years. And uh, I really think that if they put themselves in a better position for data as a service, that they would really, really open up that market cap uh, projection from uh, 2.6 to 3.8 billion. Uh, I think they could easily double it uh, just leveraging that data alone. All right, so finally, let's get to the chart. Here we have the chart. It's the 15 minute chart that we have going on here. So every one of these candlesticks that we see is, um, is 15 minutes uh, in duration. And if we go back here before this thing uh, really, really took off, uh, it went from, uh, I think we were around, uh, let me go back just a little bit. There we go, around 60 some cents, then 80 some cents, which is a really, uh, a really nice gain. Um, this thing started taking off. And I mentioned this in my video yesterday, double top, drop double top drop. And every time this thing peaks in a double top, it just keeps ripping back down. And we really saw that yesterday uh, with this pop that we had. I'm in just under $2, which is an important amount to, uh, to be in right around that $2 mark. I think I might actually be in this bottom here uh, at $1.93. Uh, and the bottoms are the parts that we want to pay attention to because uh, I think the tops of these are where we see that hype. And this still, at the end of the day, it is a penny stock. It could go to zero but it's behaving like a penny stock. Again, it's not behaving yet like the company that it really is. And it's not behaving like a company that has the strong uh, uh, fundamentals, you know, uh, positive revenue uh, and, uh, and positive earnings. Um, it will get there, but until it gets there, it's just gonna be a bumpy ride. So you're either in for the long term and you just wait it out through these ups and downs, or you're in for the short term, and then you got to watch for the uh, the gains and the losses, and that's a far trickier play. I don't play penny stocks uh, for that. I hardly pay, play penny stocks at all. Yeah, I have NNDM, um, and I also have uh, BNGO, but I have BNGO for a long term ride, and because of the the confluence between what they offer and what Ark Invest represents as a company. Uh, short term, let me just draw a trend line here for you. So if this thing continues with what I'll call a, a healthier amount of growth, we can see this thing come back up by the end of day today, um, you know, we'll end the year 2020 on a positive note with this thing, ending near its resistance at $2.97, ending at two seventy two. I, I would take that all day. Honestly, I don't care if this thing drops back down. One other thing uh, that I should mention uh, with this company, and uh, this is important, they are facing delisting. They need 10 days above uh, $1 at their closing price in order to uh, remove the, the threat of being delisted. They have until June of 2021 to make that happen. I think now's the time that we're going to break that with a 10 day streak of closing prices that all end over a dollar. We should be aware of the fact that this is a company that needs money. So after that 10 day period, it, uh, I fully expect them to do a capital raise. If they do it now, I think they're really pushing themselves uh, back down by diluting their shares now. They're, they're teasing that $1 minimum level. If they believe they're strong enough going forward to stay up above that $1 level so that they don't get delisted from the NASDAQ, you know, great. At this point in time, if I were the one uh, who was in charge of making the call at BNGO, I would say, hey, let's wait out the 10 days, keep this above a dollar, and then after that, we'll do a capital raise uh, if, our, if our stock price is still high enough. So that's what I got for you today. Let me turn off this screen share. There we go. Now I can talk to you guys directly. I hope that you found uh, today's video informative. If you liked it, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so you can see anytime my videos come up. Make sure you like it, share it out with your friends and help me grow this thing so I can uh, make sure that I can bring you this information as often as possible to the best uh, of my ability possible. I do this stuff for myself. It's for entertainment purposes only, but if it helps out your due diligence, um, good. You know, If it's part of your research, great. Uh, I'm glad that you came. Uh, contact your financial advisor before you make any financial decisions. I'm Dr. Stock. Thanks for rocking with me. Now go get that money.